In the deepest recesses of reality, where dreams and wakefulness intertwine, lies a hidden kingdom, an expansive realm of undiscovered potentials. Welcome to The Creative Use of Imagination by Neville Goddard, a text that unveils the mysteries of the mind, uncovering secret gateways to worlds both imaginary and palpable. Picture yourself standing on the threshold between the tangible and the ethereal. Here, every thought shapes reality. Every whisper of the mind weaves spells into the fabric of existence. Neville Goddard, our guide on this interdimensional voyage, beckons us to delve into the inner magic that lies deep within our psyche. Goddard's words are akin to ancient manuscripts unearthed from the cosmic library, divulging secrets long shrouded in the mists of time. In this auditory odyssey, we will peel back the layers of perception, defy the constraints of space and time, and dive into a boundless sea of possibilities where dreams manifest and reality bends to the will of imagination. Prepare yourself for a journey where the line between the real and the imagined fades, where the boundaries of the mind dissolve and the art of crafting your own reality becomes the most thrilling of adventures. Welcome to The Creative Use of Imagination by Neville Goddard. As the curtain rises, let the magic unfold before your eyes. Consciousness is the only reality. The ancients knew this great truth, but our modern masters have not yet discovered it. There is only one substance in the world. Our scientists call it energy, while scriptures define it as consciousness. Chapter 1. Your Infinite Worth The purpose of these discourses is to provoke a psychological change within you, as an individual, humanity understood psychologically as an infinite series of levels of consciousness, and you are individually what you are based on where you stand in this series. Consciousness is the only reality, and where you are conscious of being psychologically determines the circumstances of your life. The ancients knew this great truth, but our modern masters have not yet discovered it. There is only one substance in the world. Our scientists call it energy, while scriptures define it as consciousness. We are told that the universe was caused by water, but if this is true, it could only evolve into nothing but water. But if the basic substance is energy or consciousness, it can manifest as iron, steel and wood, to name a few. Man, seeing a variety of forms, thinks of countless substances, but what he sees is only a change in the arrangement of the same basic substance. Consciousness tells us that at the moment of admission, all things manifest as light. The word light recorded here means consciousness, knowledge. The state that the individual admits into his consciousness is the cause of one man's wealth and another's poverty. The poor man admits to being in a state of poverty by saying, I am poor, just as the rich man admits wealth by saying, I am rich. Everything you affirm to be, whether good, bad or indifferent, correct or incorrect, must manifest in your world, for by affirming the state, you have consented to its life. There is only one cause, and that is consciousness. Your consciousness is the center from which your world reflects and echoes the state you currently occupy. Now, a state can be defined as anything you believe and are conscious of as true. Therefore, if you want your world to change, you must determine what you are willing to accept and consent to as true before you can change it. To achieve a certain self-definition, you must begin by critically observing your automatic reaction to an event, as your reaction defines your state. And you can, without rising from your chair, rebuild your world simply by changing your level or state of being. This is done by critically observing yourself while reacting to life. If you do not like the circumstances of your life, acknowledge the cause, be willing to admit that circumstances only objectify what you are conscious of. Then, change your consciousness, and your world will change. If you react to what is objectified, you are bound to a certain level of consciousness, but if you refuse to react, the thread is broken. Stop being conscious of what is not beautiful, for every unlovely thought makes you walk in psychological mud. Rather identify with beauty, with love, and you will rise to the infinite level of your own being, and you will change the circumstances of your life. Your state of consciousness is like a magnet that attracts life. Iron in its demagnetized state is simply a swirling mass of electrons, but when the electrons align in one direction, 
the iron is magnetized. It is not necessary to add anything to iron to make it magnetic, nor to remove anything to demagnetize it. This same principle applies to you. You can change your world by rearranging your thoughts and making them travel in one direction, and that is towards the realization of your desire. Observe your reactions to life, for any change in the disposition of your mind detectable by self-observation will cause a change in your external world. It is important to learn to be passive in the face of what seems antipathetic or unacceptable to you, thus you will awaken inner dynamism. When you find your inner being, you will discover that the qualities you condemn in others are actually within you. Then you will know the secret of forgiveness, for by forgiving yourself, others will forgive you all things, not just some. All things manifest as light, and everything that manifests is light. The moment you are conscious of a thought, it manifests. It could not exist if you were not conscious of it. The universe moves with a necessity without movement, for it has no motives of its own. It moves rather under the necessity of manifesting the dispositions of human minds. This teaching aims to awaken you to your light, and awakening begins with self-observation. If you have a secret inclination to live in the mud of complacency and self-condemnation, your world will reflect these feelings. But if you rearrange your mind and live in the heavenly feeling of harmony and love, your manifested world will change. If today you devoted five minutes to critically observing yourself, your behaviors would surprise you by revealing how deceptive you are. It's a terrible shock, I know, but each shock of this kind will let in the light of consciousness, and life is an ever-increasing illumination as the light enters. You become more and more aware of who you really are. There is only one cause of life's phenomena, and it is only by observing your own consciousness that you can discover the cause of what is happening to you. There is no greater tyrant than the belief in a secondary cause. Allow this tyrant to depart by recalling the only substance, the only cause which is consciousness, and immediately change what you are conscious of. Simply by observing your reactions to life, you can find yourself. Remember that as long as you react the way you do, the same things will confront you, for everything you admit is manifested by your consciousness, and everything you manifest is your consciousness itself. Stop walking in the world in the mud of living in a basement. Your soul is formed by everything to which you consent. Lose your soul at one level, and you will find yourself at a higher level, defined differently. Always examine yourself critically, for that is when you become critical. You automatically justify your reactions and associate yourself with the observed thing. Everything is individual. Collective security and collective salvation are terms addressed individually. Learn to stand on your own feet and not on the feet of a group. You must free yourself, and the only way to do that is to awaken the Christ within you, who is sleeping deeply. Think noble thoughts based on noble concepts, and they will yield you great dividends. They will elevate you in consciousness and transform your world. Give yourself daily bread by giving yourself the chance to remember who you really are. Never envy another's good fortune, simply appropriate your own. Transform yourself by renewing your mind and changing the ideas sown within it. You cannot change your thought until you change the ideas from which your thoughts emanate. Chapter 2. Do not take your I am in vain. Your individual state of consciousness is your level of being and attracts all events you encounter in life. As your reactions determine what you are, any change in your external world must be produced by your inner level of being. In the seventh chapter of Mark's book, it is said, Listen and understand, there is nothing outside that can defile a man, but what comes out of the man's mind is what defiles him. Thoughts are things. When you identify with a thought, it represents itself as an act. If the thought is unlovely, it defiles you. Wake up and choose only thoughts that contribute to the birth of your desire. You must constantly observe your dwelling, for where you are psychologically, that is what you are. Your mindset indicates your state, and you always externalize the state you are in. The Upanishads, a class of Vedic treatises dealing with vast philosophical issues, state that the soul imagines itself in a state, takes on the results of that state, and frees itself from its results by not imagining itself in that state. Your soul is what you consent to by feeling yourself in the situation of your answered prayer. 
enter into a state and your soul has taken on the results of that state. If you do not identify with the state, you free yourself from its results. Accept an idea as true, identify with it, and it will represent itself in your world. But if you do not accept the thought and do not identify with it through feeling, you will free yourself from its results. You must become very selective and learn not to associate with unpleasant thoughts. No matter how unjust, you have no right to carry it with you, and you cannot rise in consciousness until all your injustices are thrown on the altar and sacrificed. Only when you abandon them will you find the holy water. This holy water is not what different churches teach us, but a symbol of the twelve aspects of the mind. When your mind is cleansed of all cobwebs or injustices or negative thoughts, the bowl of holy water is placed on the back of the oxen, and your disciplined mind serves you instead of you serving it. You control your mind. The ox symbolizes the mind in a wild state and must be tamed. Start now to associate your thoughts only with good. Then what comes out of your mouth or your mind will never defile you. I am is the self-definition of the infinite. Tell yourself that I am has sent you. Consciousness is the only power in the universe. Its power keeps you alive. If you say, I am sick, you are. If you say, I am safe, you are. If you feel yourself in the situation of a determined state, you must assume the results of that mental state. All things come to life from a state of mind, and without the state, nothing can be done. You only resurrect the state you identify with. Where you are psychologically is what you truly are. Therefore, if you find yourself feeling sorry for yourself, let go of that and start feeling happy. If you don't, you will identify with the state of self-pity and never move beyond it. Let the weak say, I am strong. Don't wait to become strong to say that. If you feel weak in any way, declare I am strong, and if you persist in that assumption, it will become a fact. No one should ever take the name of I am in vain. The righteous is already conscious of being the person they want to be. They never sin, but run towards the name, for to sin is to miss one's desired state, and righteousness is to attain it. Assume the consciousness of being the one you want to be, and you will save yourself from your current state. Your individual hunger can and will be satisfied when you run with righteousness towards the desired state. This is done through the act of feeling. Feel happy and you will be consciously aware of happiness. Feel married and you will be consciously in the state of marriage. The desired thing must be felt before it is consciously realized. Learn to say no to unpleasant thoughts instead of accepting them with passive indifference since the soul must imagine itself in action to taste the fruit of the acted state. Remember that only consciousness is the cause of the fruit you reap and the sole explanation for its existence. Let us now begin to feel only the lovely thoughts of fulfilled desires before their confirmation by our senses, and let go of the animal instinct to suffer and revel in feelings of pain and self-pity. The psychological tongue is very similar to physics, if someone bothers you, move away and keep the tongue of your mind away from the painful points of displeasure, for your little mental conversations are the producers of your future. Clothe yourself in joy and good tidings, and you shall enter your holy place clothed in your immortal garment of love. There is a rhythm in your world that you cannot hear or see, and your aura is like no other. A dog knows it. If two scents were identical, no dog could find you. But you are unique, 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 with your own special aura that radiates your level of being. Do not judge auras for the simple reason that you must see the aura of the other through yours, and what you see is only your assumption of the person. Complacency is a curse. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Control your imagination with constant attention, and dare to rise up and be heard. Andrew is the disciple who symbolizes this aspect of the mind, Pay attention to your thoughts and discipline them to emanate from the feeling of your fulfilled desire, for you are not awake until your outer self is peaceful and your inner self dynamic. Do not try to argue with someone to pull them out of their misery, for we are told to let the impure remain impure. No matter, follow me. To man is given the power of self to think, and to each it is allowed to think for themselves all things that are admitted into consciousness manifest, whether good, bad, 
or indifferent. Dare to use this teaching, and you will never feel the need to justify failure again. Chapter 3. Desire. As you are, so you will appear. God, the priest sees him as the chief of all celestial and earthly records. For a judge, he is the great judge who always imposes punishment. For the Hottentot, God is the kind of chief he would like to be himself. Thus, as you can see, men always create God in their own image. God has been God since creation. Only truth is man's salvation. But the God you worship now will soon no longer be your God. For the soul in its development always reshapes its thoughts and learns more truly in its progress whom to love and how to worship. Through this teaching, you will learn to transcend your concept of God, for God does not change. Only your ideas about Him change. Desire is your prime mover, for you cannot move without a desire. Ask yourself, what do you want from me? And then formulate your desire. Feel its presence, and you have granted yourself the realization of desire. Human life is nothing but the satisfaction of hunger, and the infinite series of levels of consciousness are the means to satisfy this hunger. Health is a desire, a hunger that can be appeased when formulated in the mind as the idea, I am healthy. The same goes for wealth, peace, harmony, or fame, for all are states of consciousness. Identify with the desired state, persist in that identification, and as you and God are one consciousness, what you are conscious of you impress upon it. The cross is a symbol of suffering. There is no physical cross where a man was nailed, but a body of beliefs that a man carries. If you do not deny yourself, if you carry your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of me. Carry your cross by raising your consciousness, for your I am is the creator of your world. As an individual, you move and live in time, but your true being is in eternity. Think of the vertical line of the cross as the line of being on which there are countless levels of consciousness. Time cannot make you better or wiser. In fact, time cannot do anything to change your level of being, for change is all in the vertical line where you move to higher or lower levels of your own being. As change is imminent, we speak of it as an infinite imminence, something closer than close and faster than real. The man you would like to be is imminent, closer than close, the ideal you dream of being is closer than now and becomes reality through a change in your reactions to life. In the book of Revelation, it is said, I will give to each according to his work. The only work you are called to is the work on yourself. Begin this work by observing your reactions to life. Remember that your future does not unfold. It is already complete. As all events you encounter while ascending or descending the levels of your being will cause changes in your life, you are currently resting at a certain level. Rise, take your seat, and walk. Break the threads of life that bind you to the current state where you now find yourself. Break those threads by changing your thoughts, for only when you rise from within will you find a corresponding path on the outside. Have you ever wondered what the world would look like? If you had eyes too pure to behold iniquity, if you were all tenderness, all love, all generosity, aim for those feelings, then observe your relationship with them. It is here, amidst the storms of life, that you work this law. If you identify with a state of unlove, you will find yourself immersed in it, but you can raise your cross by breaking your automatic and mechanical reactions to life, thus sacrificing your current level of being. This message does not bring peace but a sword, for I bear the sword of truth which is the word of God. This word is sharper than any two-edged sword, for it can penetrate the soul and spirit. I do not suggest turning against your earthly parents, but against the psychological ideas that govern your behavior and the dominant state of mind that governs your actions and reactions to life. If at this moment your feelings are not noble, turn to them, for they are your psychological mother. This is done by placing a new feeling in their place. You cannot change your thought until you change your feeling, and all feelings come from ideas. A man's enemies are those of his own household, all that he accepts as true within himself. This sword can even pierce to the division of soul and spirit. Your father, your I am, is spirit, and when you worship him, you must do so in spirit and in truth. Stay still and tell yourself the consent. I am everything you are conscious of, everything you believe and accept as true, whether wise or foolish, 
forms the garment you wear, but you can clothe yourself anew and rise to a higher level of being when you take up your cross and follow your imagination. Most of us lack goals. We want more than what we currently have. We want others to change, but we don't want to do what will cause change because we don't want to change ourselves. In Revelation, John tells us, I will give to each according to his work. The gift is not given according to another's work, but according to the work you do within yourself, and this work consists of critically observing your reactions to life as they bind you to a specific level. Detach yourself from your unpleasant thoughts and associate with your goal by elevating yourself to its level, for your ideal is on this vertical line where you stand. Scriptures tell us, Seek and you will find, and when you find, you will be like him. I say that you will never realize your desire until you are that desire. Those who seek love only manifest their lack of love. Never seek what you are, for you are always in the process of conceiving yourself. All human life is the appeasement of desire, and desire conceived as fulfilled is externalized. If you do not have enough hunger to transcend your current level of consciousness, you will conceive nothing greater. As long as you are in love with the state in which you find yourself, you cannot and will not want to leave it. Without the vertical line of states, life would have no meaning. The ancients called this infinite series Jacob's Ladder. This ladder is not built but climbed through self-discovery. When you think of another, you only see your opinion of him. If you think he is kind, he is kind. If you think he is foolish, he is foolish, for he plays the role you assigned him based on your opinion. Therefore, if you want him to change, you must change your opinion of yourself, for he is only your externalized opinion. Where you are psychologically is what you are. Therefore, associate only with the feeling that leads you to the realization of your dreams, and let all your dreams be noble. Chapter 4. Make Wine. The purpose of the Bible is to elevate the individual to a higher level of being. It begins with the state of Moses and the discovery of the I Am. Then in the book of Isaiah we are told, Turn your foot from the Sabbath and delight yourself in the Lord. Let us examine this thought to find its deepest meaning. Now to keep the Sabbath you must cease to have mental doubts, for the mental foot on which you stand is your belief. When your mental foot touches the ground, its action is automatic and mechanical. Using your powerful consciousness, Begin now to break the mechanical control it exerts over your life by bringing your thoughts back to your fulfilled desire and observing the Sabbath. The twins mentioned in the scriptures symbolize your duality. Abel, the inner self, and Cain, the outer self. Now a reversal of the order must occur, for in the New Testament, your true identity is revealed as the Christ, your inner self, your hope of glory. As you walk the earth, See people as you want them to be seen, and you pour oil on their wounds. But if you do not, you are like the scribes and Pharisees described in Matthew chapter 23, doing their works to be seen by men, preaching, but not practicing. In the third chapter of the book of John, the story of Nicodemus, an intellectual man who believed that if he observed the law of Moses, he could enter the kingdom of heaven, is told. However, he is told, you must be born again, born of water and of the Spirit, here we see the difference between intellect and wisdom. Observing the law of Moses is not enough. You must experience a change at the level of your being, thereby granting yourself the wisdom to know rebirth. Your inner conversation is the soil of your future, whether beautiful or not. This is clearly told to us in the book of Deuteronomy. Today I set before you blessings and curses. Every time you rebuke someone, Though you do it mentally, you curse them, and every time you do unto others as you would have them do unto you, they are blessed in doing so. Water is the symbol of psychological truth. Knowing the truth is not enough. Action must follow. It is at this point that psychological water turns into wine. Begin now to observe all your unpleasant and negative thoughts and change them, for as long as you do not separate yourself from the state from which these thoughts emanate, they will continue to bring about the same life experiences. Chapter 5. Seeing God St. Augustine once said, O oh my God, let me see you, 
and if to die is to see you, let me die to behold your face. However, when we fell, God told us, You cannot see my face and live, but I will pass by with my glory, and when it passes by, you will see my back, but my face you will not see. This God is your wonderful I am, your consciousness that always asserts, I am that I am. The power of imagination is the only power. It is your power to kill, to make alive, to hurt, and to heal. It is your imagination that shapes light, does good, creates evil, and there is no other God. Man tends to believe in two powers, one for good and the other for evil, but I tell you there is only one. The I am in man is the one who kills and makes alive, the one who curses and creates his consciousness of being is the only reality. The self-definition of an absolute state is I am divine, and this absolute state is God. It is your I am that cannot be seen. Matthew tells us, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The word pure in the preceding affirmation comes from the Greek word katharos, which also means clean or clear. To be pure, the mind must be cleansed of all obstructions created by traditional erroneous thought. The heart must be cleansed of belief in a secondary power. Only when this is done will you be blessed, for you will know the one God as your true being. There is no power outside of you. The same power in you that does good creates evil. Begin now to free yourself from the belief in two powers, for only then will you be pure in heart and see God. The vast universe is nothing but the response to man's consciousness. If you believe that the I in another is the cause of your disgust and not your own I, then you have planted a tree in your mind that obstructs your vision and must be uprooted. We are told, No man will imagine evil in his heart. I am not speaking of a physical organ, but of the mind, the center or heart of the subject. When your heart is pure, you become a member of the order of Melchizedek. Learn to discipline your mind, for only a disciplined thought can maintain the feeling of the fulfilled desire. If what you have imagined has not come to pass, it is because you have not cut the ties that bind you to the level where you currently stand. You must break your mechanical reaction to life to change your life's trajectory. The sole purpose of this teaching is to encourage and push you towards the vertical line of the cross. It is crucial to learn to be critical of yourself, for if you are not, you will justify your behavior, which will keep you in your current state. But if you observe yourself, you will stop the negative thoughts that bind you to your current state and move out towards another. There are three ways to cleanse your mind of the trees of traditional erroneous thought and allow you to see God. Uncritical observation, non-identification, and sacrifice of the state you believed yourself to be. Try to see God through small images, but God can only be seen through belief in a power. Through uncritical observation, you will find yourself in your particular state. If you do not like the role the state requires you to play in its development, stop reacting to it. You will not be pure enough to see God until you reach the point of no longer reacting. When you see Him, you will know Him, for you will be like Him, where the I is always what the I is, establishing a self in you, not a number of selves. Secondary causes uprooted, and the mind cleansed of the power to enslave belief in powers external to you is a tree that must be uprooted from your mind. Begin now to use this technique, and you will realize all your dreams, but first, you must be a dream, a desire for something, for desire is your springboard to action. Define your goal and imagine that if it were accomplished now, where would you be physically? How would the world be? How would your partner, your mother, your father, your friends be? How would they see you? Feel their presence, see the joy expressed on their faces, and hear their congratulations. Repeat this act until you feel fulfilled. Then, having assumed the feeling of fulfillment, remain faithful to it. For your assumption contains within it all the plans and power necessary to externalize your desire. Your desire can be an improvement in your financial situation, your social circle, or a deeper understanding of the mystery. The desire depends on you, but when put into practice, this technique never fails. The kingdom of heaven, with its many states, some charming and others less so, is within you. The state capable of hurting or healing, killing or making alive is within you. 
all are fully equipped psychological states ready to be externalized in your world. And if, having entered into a particular abode or state, you find it uninteresting to remain there, you can exit through the same technique by which you entered, through the act of assumption. It is so easy to complain about oneself and so difficult to give up that feeling. But you cannot enter another state until you do. No one can pull out the weeds of self-pity or the trees of so-called secondary causes for you. You must pull them out yourself. God placed Adam in the garden to tend and keep it. Like Adam, you have fallen asleep, but when you wake up, you will be the Christ, the power and the wisdom. Begin now to observe your reactions to life and do not allow yourself to identify with an antipathetic state. Sacrifice your minor hurts, your resentments and the belief in secondary causes. Then you will be blessed, for you will be pure in heart and you will see God. Wake up, test yourself, and discover that the flaw you see in another exists in you. Turn to yourself, and you will find in yourself the Christ who is your hope of glory. Chapter 6 Everything is Consciousness Blessed are you when your mental understanding has expanded by eliminating the trees of traditional erroneous thought. For only then will you know that everything is consciousness and consciousness is everything. You will know that every secondary cause is a tyrant, and if you believe in an external power, you are fighting a losing battle. Emerson once said, Man surrounds himself with the true image of himself, for every mind builds itself a house beyond its house, a world beyond its world. What you are, you can only see yourself. So build for yourself a world as you would like it to be a world beyond the world that is now visible to you. The world you desire exists and will unfold in great proportions when you, all mind, surround yourself with the true image of yourself as you would like to be. Think of your world as a canvas with pictures painted there by the disposition of your mind. Your I am, or consciousness, has already arranged as many patterns for your canvas as there are people walking the earth. Turn to yourself and affirm that your desire exists, feel yourself moving towards its fulfillment, then paint your canvas of consciousness. Everything is there at your disposal. Its reality depends on you and the intensity of your desire. Always look at yourself, for your consciousness is the only cause of the phenomena of your individual life. Perhaps you have imagined something that has never come to pass, and you feel that you have failed. But I tell you that there is only one cause of failure, and that is the absence of the feeling of naturalness. A supposition takes time to become a fact, and a desire is fulfilled proportionally to the degree of naturalness of the feeling of possession. If something does not feel natural to you, it is not in your nature. Asking in my name is asking in my nature or character. Therefore, when you ask, you must feel that you are already what you seek. All that you desire, when you pray, believe that you have received it, and you will receive it. It is important that you feel in your fulfilled desire, for consciousness is the only reality, and all that you see is only a representation of a state of consciousness. It is foolish to seek a thing before establishing its cause. An effect depends on a state of consciousness, and you cannot find the effect without being its cause. And if you do not feel the naturalness of the desire, you cannot externalize it, for consciousness is very observable. Ask yourself, since when have you been aware of being what you want to be, to what extent do you feel its reality now? Matthew tells us, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? You have faith in what you are aware of, I hope so, for without faith it is impossible to accomplish anything. It is the substance of the thing expected and the cause of all phenomena. The word perverse means to turn in the opposite direction without fixed direction or single purpose. When the latest headline or news bulletin can turn you away from your desire, you are perverse and you fail. But if success is your goal, its mindset must be brought to a point where the feeling of success is so natural that you cannot deviate from it. On the other hand, importune means shameless impudence. If you persist in your disposition, its shameless impudence will not allow you to accept the evidence of your senses when they deny your assumption, but will reorganize the substance called life according to the pattern of your disposition. 
This world moves with the necessity to shape and manifest the gift of individual spirit. It is important to persevere until realization becomes your nature. Changes begin to occur in your moment of naturalness. Jacob said to the Lord, I will not let you go until you bless me. Like Jacob, you can wrestle all night with an idea, and all ideas descend from heaven to become flesh if you do not accept a no for an answer, but instead remain in the feeling of your fulfilled desire, you will be blessed by its externalization. Scripture speaks of a man whose son was dead, but when he went to the man of God and asked him to bring the child back to life, his ideal was realized. Whether it is success, health, romance, money, or fame, it is your sleeping son. But if you believe in his life and walk in the assumption that you are successful, healthy, or rich according to your desire, your sleeping son will rise from the inert state and be made alive in your world. The parable speaks of a judge who, it is said, did not fear God and had no regard for men. Within you is a judge who will give you everything you ask for, if you are as persistent as the widow in the story. Coming at midnight, she persisted in her request until the judge granted her desires by saying, This widow wearies me, I will avenge her, lest she wear me out by her constant coming. When the light of consciousness does not shine on your fulfilled desire, it is midnight. But if you fill your desire with your light of consciousness and persist, then what you are conscious of will always become a reality. You always surround yourself with the true image of yourself and what you are, which only you can see whether good, bad or indifferent. Observe your reactions to life and you will observe the being you want to separate from. And as you begin to identify with the state you have chosen, the separation occurs. But your assumption must be a maintained attitude and if, even for a moment, you lose the state of mind, regain it. And if you lose it again, feel the state of mind again, until the state of mind becomes so natural that your thought of that state is normal and automatic. The great failure of most students of truth is that they perpetually build but defer their occupation. When you enter your desired state, feel its presence surrounding you, like an answered prayer, then become so united with the state that your thoughts emanate from it. Persist in seeing your world from this state, and it will become a reality. You and you alone determine the timing for the state to externalize. If your mind is so disciplined that it cannot be turned aside, the desire of your heart will externalize on your spatial screen. But if you believe in some secondary power, your belief will cause a delay. Your consciousness is the power of the word. It is divine and undivided. There are not two I am's, but one I am, on multiple levels. The desire claiming realization now. Wrestle like Jacob, but when the wrestling is over, the desire like Israel is born. You may think your name is John Brown or Mary Smith, but your true name is I am, and your dominant state of mind is your nature. Divorce yourself from a state of mind and assume a new nature. Persist in your new realization and you will give birth to its offspring. When new phenomena appear that testify to your creative inner I am, only if you lack importunity and constantly return to the state of mind you are trying to divorce from, the problem will arise. Desire is the hidden identity. What you desire, you already have. If you acknowledge as a fact that you already are what you desire to be and do not deviate, but maintain your importunity by walking in the state of mind of realization that dominates you now, no power on earth can prevent you from expressing it. But you must feel in the situation of the answered prayer, for only by believing that you already have it, the one who prays successfully is the one who grants it. The trampoline of action and the one who grants the prayer, there is no other being who grants it. The one who receives the answered prayer is the one who grants it by reorganizing the mind. Learn to reorganize your mind, and if you find yourself walking in the field of unanswered prayers, turn and walk in the field of the state of mind of realization. And remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The only reality and substance are consciousness, from which every prayer has its beginning and its end. The entire book of Hebrews is devoted to faith. Faith is to see the invisible one and the hope of things to come. We have been announced this good news just as they were, but it did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith. The good news 
is the fulfilled desire. If desire is not mixed with faith, it is futile, for faith is the consciousness of the reality of the fulfillment of that desire or dream. As you can see, creation is finished, and we only become aware of increasing portions of it. The absence of faith would be to deny the reality of the assumed state. If you limit yourself to your physical senses that contradict everything you desire, then faith will be unknown to you. But faith will make real what is invisible. The being you would like to be, although invisible, will be revealed and become visible for all to see when you walk in the faith of its reality. Then, like Jacob, you can say, My righteousness will answer for me in the future. Jacob knew he could not become perverse and return to the old state, but if he maintained the consciousness of having what reason denied, including genetic law, he would attain his goal. God the Father is not a man, but the dominant idea you serve. The enemies of this idea are those of your own household, your own thoughts. Maintain a dominant idea in your consciousness, and in a way you do not know, your right thought will externalize the desired state in your world. A Pharisee is someone who conforms to all the laws made by man, who strictly observes the Levitical law of external purification. We are now told, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. But seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. True righteousness is consciousness. We often confuse the word and seek righteousness as a thing, but the consciousness of being is the magnet that draws a thing to it. Imbue your consciousness with the feeling of being the man or woman you wish to be, and your righteousness will cause it to happen. You cannot inherit Christianity, you adopt it by entering into its inner conviction. You become purer and nobler. Christ taught righteousness in his law of identical harvest by saying that a man will reap what he sows. Psychologically, a state of consciousness sown within the mind will be reaped externally as external events. Similarly, as long as you continue to sow your current state of consciousness, you will continue to encounter similar events in your life. Walk consciously with the feeling that your desire is fulfilled and you will never sin by missing the experience of fulfillment. However, you cannot turn away and return to your old state. We are all the prodigal son who wandered off, but we are told that when he came to himself, he turned and entered his father's house. At that moment, the fatted calf, the robe and the ring were given to him. Observe who you are in consciousness. Turn to your senses by turning to your father. The desired state will be given to you. Observe your reactions to life, and you will discover your psychological position. If your reactions lack love, you are walking in the mud, feeding the pigs. But when you turn to the father of all life and enter the state you desire, assuming its fulfillment, your actions will be lovely. Persist and you will come out of the mud and mire and enter into the kingdom of fulfilled desire. There is no righteous indignation, for man's anger cannot accomplish righteousness. Nothing is as unpleasant as righteous indignation, but right consciousness is the righteous state of mind. My goal is to be someone who expands in consciousness, for I am a teacher, and I must always grow as a teacher. That's my goal, and I must remember it morning, noon, and night. I must persist in this state while externalizing it in my world. The parable speaks of a blind little girl with five brothers. The brothers, relying on their senses, went out into the world and got lost, while the girl, unable to rely on her senses, wove a golden thread, attaching one end to her finger and the other to the sun, and she never got lost. You too can learn to rely on the light of consciousness, holding on to the thread that is your goal and not getting trapped by the evidence of your senses. By remembering your desire, you will not get lost like the five brothers, for you will not care what others do, but you will simply walk while being conscious of who you want to be. No power can deter you from your goal when you are conscious of having achieved it. As you were told, seek first the kingdom and its righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Turn inward, and you will find the power to produce what nature and your external senses deny. Test yourself by controlling your thoughts, by seeing only what you want to see, and listening only to what contributes to the realization of your world as you want it to be, 
if you continue to control your world in your imagination until the dominant feeling overwhelms all other ideas, your right consciousness will bring it about for you, and your dream will become your reality. But if you do not feel fulfilled, you can easily turn away and lose your goal. The teaching of the church is one of rising ever higher in consciousness until rebirth occurs. There is only one purpose in life, and that is to rise ever higher on the vertical bar of the cross. Knowing the state you want to express, walk as if you were already expressing it now. No man who puts his hand to the plough and looks back, in other words, once you have moved towards the new state, do not look back at the old, or you will become like Lot's wife. She looked back and became a pillar of salt, which is a preservative. The moment you look back at your previous state, you return to it, for all states exist preserved in your imagination, ready to be occupied. The kingdom of heaven is a higher state of consciousness, a step above where you are currently, and each higher level is attained by a change in attitude for the better. No problem can be solved without a change in consciousness, and what requires a state of consciousness to produce its effect can never be achieved without that state. It is the height of foolishness to expect security while being conscious of insecurity. On the other hand, one cannot be uncertain if walking consciously in that uncertainty. It is unnecessary to pull strings to get what you want, just walk with the consciousness that you already have it, for a supposition, even if false, if persisted in, will become a fact. Do not seek to be better but to be better at something. Most metaphysical students have no goal, claiming that God knows best. But I ask you, how can this be when you and God, your Father, are one? Human nature wants the thing to come first and the belief to come afterward, but I say you must assume the consciousness of already having or being your desire before the sign of having it can appear. Signs follow, never proceed. Seek the conscious feeling of having reached your goal, and the sign that you have accomplished it will then come. You do not get things and then become righteous. Righteousness is clear sight. Always claim the higher level than where you are now. Dying to your current level for your father's house has many mansions. Release your current dwelling and reach for the one you seek. Chapter 8 The Perfect Will of God Understood Psychologically Humanity is an infinite series of levels of consciousness, and the individual is what he is based on the place he occupies in the series. In the book of Romans, Paul exhorts us not to conform to this world, but to be transformed by the renewal of our mind, to test what is good and acceptable, the perfect will of God. In other words, do not look at the external world and call it reality, but break its spell by transforming your thought. But you cannot change your thought until you change your ideas, for it is from ideas that you think. Remember that your level of consciousness attracts life and is the sole cause of the phenomena you observe. To be conscious is to do the will of God, whose name is always I Am. Being aware of what you are aware of is what you are. I am aware of what I am. Think of an infinite scale of values like I Am, with your desired state just above where you are now. God speaks to you through the language of desire. When you want to rise, it is because God is speaking to you, calling you to surrender to the feeling of already being what you want to be. Let go of fear, limitation and doubt, and submit to the will of God. A simple assumption will elevate you to the level where your ideal is identified, and you will begin to see your world differently. This is where self-observation comes into play. Do not observe the external world, but your reactions to it. When another displeases or offends you, look within yourself, to the self that listened with displeasure and expressed it. It's hard to believe, I know, but you are the sole cause of your displeasure. A lady I know thought her boss was an impossible monster to please. She had formed an opinion of him, and that invisible, inaudible opinion spoke to her all day, causing her boss to do what he did and say the words to cause her displeasure. Being a kind woman willing to change her feeling, she listened to her boss praise and thanked him for his compliments. As soon as she saw herself reverting to her old role of criticizing him, she stopped the thought and put on the new record of praise, thanks, and congratulations. 
In 24 hours, the new record was externalized, and when she resigned a year later, her boss begged her to stay and told her that if she ever wanted to come back, the door would always be open to her. Your internal conversations are the soil of all your future action. Morning, noon, and night, you hold internal discussions. When you catch yourself, break the habit by deliberately creating new thoughts, thus making a new recording that will externalize into your future. God's will is I am. His will always comes to pass because it is the power that resurrects and makes alive. There is no transforming power in time, only a transformation of the moment. If you have difficulties with another, look within yourself, for it is the self called you that is speaking to you. Like a thought, carefully listen to what you tell yourself, and you will discover where the difficulty lies. Let me now define the self or soul. It is what you believe, feel, think, and consent to. You may consent to the belief of having been mistreated, being stupid, or that those in their cruelty cause your displeasure. If you do, your consent forms your level of being and attracts your life, whether good, bad, or indifferent. Your soul cannot be changed by joining churches, synagogues, or groups. You must turn to yourself, the inner self you already know, for it is he who attracts those who mistreat you and determines every little detail of your outer experience. If you have a secret attachment to your conflicts, it cannot be helped. But when you consent to be otherwise, then you can change. Submit to the will of God, knowing first your ideal, then submitting to it, doing in your imagination what you would do physically if your desire were realized. Once this is clearly defined, repeat the act again and again until you are affected by it, and its realization possesses your mind. When the idea is so firmly rooted in your thoughts that it flows freely from it, watch, for you will have a change in your external world. Become pure in heart by purifying your mind of the belief in powers outside yourself. Then, believing that consciousness is the only reality, assume a new state of consciousness, for your world is your house, your externalized state of consciousness. Cleanse the house by observing your thoughts. When you begin to do this, you will find that most of your thoughts are unpleasant, but as you learn to passively think of the people who displease you, your thoughts will lose their lack of love, and with a mind filled with joy and gratitude, you will ascend Jacob's ladder to the kingdom of love. When you have carefully defined your desire or dream, fully and totally surrender yourself to it. Then strive to remain faithful to the new idea you have entered into. You may not succeed at first, but do not condemn yourself. Just come back as often as necessary until the feeling is so strong that your thoughts usually flow from the new state. This teaching is not for the weak, nor for those who seek to escape life or who want to point an accusing finger at another to find Christ in you, who is your hope of glory. You must be willing to be tested. I tell you that it is yourself that calls all men and manifestations to you. Life is easier when you can blame another. But I encourage you to pray, not for an easy life, but to become a stronger man or woman, one who witnesses that your thoughts are the cause of your unhappiness, not the other. Transform yourself by renewing your mind, and you will test the good and acceptable word of God. Would it be acceptable to you to be raised to a higher position? This is the will of God, who will not recede until he has accomplished the designs of your mind. You do the will of God when you identify with your desire, and if you believe in your claim, you are righteous, and your imaginary world will reflect your righteousness. But if you do not believe, you will lose your goal and die in your sins. The only way to escape the life you now lead is through a radical psychological transformation of yourself, this is done by defining yourself with your desire, then changing your thoughts until their effect possesses your mind and you comfortably reside in the new state. Remember that your level of being attracts life and unless that level changes, your story remains the same. Let your current level die by submitting your entire being to a level beyond it. Truly try, it is not difficult to do. Eliminate the control that past erroneous emotional reactions have over you by reviewing experiences and changing them. This is done by rewriting the experience in your mind, saying what you should have said and doing what you should have done at that time. Let this corrected image slip back into your subconscious while deciding not to make the same mistake by repeating this technique. 
you will free yourself from all feelings of hatred, resentment, regret, and other emotional disturbances that cling to your memory. And as you release yourself from these destructive feelings, you release yourself from their power to attract poor health and erroneous results for you. Relaxation of the body, plus the passivity of the mind, and focusing attention on the desired goal, equals achievement of the goal. Anxiety has no creative power in this educational darkness school. Consciousness, whose origin is in eternity, provides the power for your experiences in time. So put yourself to the test, for in this teaching there is no room for failure. Chapter 9 The Word in Action In the book of Hebrews, Paul tells us to rest in the Lord. Why? Because the man who rests in the Lord is transformed into the image in which he rests. If my goal is to be a good teacher and I rest in that feeling, I will transform into that image. Unfortunately, most states in which men and women rest are negative. Feeling uncertain, they will rest in the conviction that the world owes them a living. Feeling hurt, it is easy to rest in that injustice until the mood becomes natural. You may condemn the state and believe that others are the cause, but through your feelings of hurt, you will transform into the same image as the state you condemn. And if someone seems to disgust you, remember there is no other. The state in which you rest causes you to listen with silent, invisible conversations. Even though the words are heard by you and only by you, they act like magnets and attract life circumstances to you. Be doers of the word, and not merely hearers, deceiving yourselves. At each meeting, I share with you the knowledge gained through personal experience, but I cannot force you to put this knowledge into practice. As a teacher, I demand results. As a student, I ask you to put this truth to the test, for if it is true, it will demonstrate itself in the test. In chapter 25 of the book of Matthew, the parable of the servants is told. To each of them his master gave talents. To one he gave five talents, which he multiplied to ten. To another he gave two talents, which he multiplied to four. When the third received his single talent, he buried it, not allowing it to increase. When the master returned, he rejoiced in the increase that the first two had achieved. But he took away from the one who had hidden his talent and gave it to the one who had ten, saying, For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have in abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. This teaching is like the talents. Practiced daily, your power of knowledge will increase. If you are only a hearer, your unused knowledge will wither and atrophy. Test yourself every day. Let others be at peace and turn to yourself, for the promise is, according to your work, it will be given to you. The man who surpasses himself rises to a higher level of being. Critically observe your reactions to life, then work on yourself by practicing this psychologically. Only by working on yourself can you rise to a higher level. But you cannot do it with negative emotion, it must be a positive emotion. We are told to lift up our eyes to the hills from whence cometh our help. Negative thoughts pull emotions down while positive thoughts uplift. If you listen to your thoughts, you stop their negative flow and change them to only hear what you want to hear. You will feel a positive emotion of relief that brings with it the knowledge that your prayer has been answered. Now, as the title of this lesson suggests, we are encouraged to be doers of the word and not merely hearers deceiving ourselves. In the book of James, a hearer is defined as a man who observes his natural face in the mirror, then turns around and forgets what he looks like, while the doer is one who looks into the perfect law of liberty, perseveres, and is blessed in all he does. How does one look into the mirror of the mind and behold oneself with what he sees? By looking at the face of your spouse, your husband, your father, or your friend. Close your eyes, relax, and think of a friend who would rejoice in your happiness. Tell them your good news and observe the expression of joy that appears on their imaginary face. Their expression will free you, for their acknowledgement has freed you to express your desire. Having looked into the perfect law of liberty, persevere, and you will be blessed in your actions. In the book of Matthew, the law is stated as follows, Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Here, 
we discover that the Bible speaks of man's psychology and not his physical form. The Bible records what is done in oneself, indicating that the conversations held internally are the soil of our future actions. Never hold mental conversations with imaginary beings. Be conscious of your thoughts, be selective and make sure your inner conversations are positive. For mechanical imagination is dormant and negative, while awake imagination is positive, noble and focused. Tonight choose someone you love and change your opinion about them. Have mental conversations with this person based on this new premise and you will become a doer of the word. If you do not, you are merely a hearer deceiving yourself. This teaching aims to awaken you to the active and dynamic being that you truly are. Your dormant thoughts are negative and passive and can only change when you critically observe your reactions to life. If you are honest with yourself, you will find an inner being of whom you are not so proud, a monster that needs to be tamed. Tame this monster by filling your mind with positive thoughts of joy and abundance, and you will transform this monster into a being of love. Get used to observing your reactions to life. Give yourself the daily bread of the ability to stop reacting negatively. Become a doer by recognizing a negative thought, breaking it, and immediately moving to a positive thought. All your complaints, wounds, self-pity, and belief that others are the cause of your pain are animals that need to be tamed. Let go of all negative feelings. Select the dwelling or state you want to enter, and the law that creates poverty will also create wealth. Let the weak man say, I am strong, and let the poor man say, I am rich, for only what you affirm internally can be externalized. Feel in the state of poverty, and poverty will manifest. Feel in the state of security by saying, I am safe, and security will result. But if you do not feel in the desired state, you will always be devoid of its results, for what requires a state of consciousness to produce its effect will never manifest without this change of consciousness. You must feel in the situation of your answered prayer, then live and act in that conviction. If you do not, you will never know the results of that state. Your fortune or misfortune has been caused by your state of consciousness. Have the courage to accept this, then become a doer, and in doing so, be blessed in each of your actions. Start now to be aware that what you hear from yourself may not benefit you, and stop receiving these impressions mechanically and unconsciously. What you hear must be filtered through what you are, and what you are is what you hear. Kind thoughts arise from kind ideas created by a kind person, so be kind to others with a tender heart, be kind to yourself by forgiving others. Now, assumption is called the crown of mysteries, and each assumption you make it alone. The world you see depends not so much on what is real, but on the assumption you make when you look at it. The talent entrusted to you is your power of conscious assumption. Do not bury it dormant with this knowledge. Your daily reactions are mechanical, denying everything you see and hear. Wake up, be aware of what you are doing and saying to yourself, and rise in consciousness by controlling your thoughts and making them positive, kind, loving and fulfilling. Chapter 10. The Pearl of Great Price When you possess the mind of Christ, you are in possession of the pearl of great price. This pearl is imminent, it is closer than close and sooner than now, for the pearl of great price is your own wonderful human imagination. You have always possessed this mind, but like any possession, unless you know it is yours and are willing to use it, it is non-existent to you. Believe me, Everything that exists in your world was first conceived in your imagination. The house you live in, the car you drive, the clothes you wear, as well as your friends, your family, your enemies, and the strangers on the street were imagined before being externalized. Now is the time to control your human imagination and govern it with love. I encourage you to awaken to the discovery that everything you seek in time is contained within you. There is only one mind with countless levels of consciousness. Your level determines where you are and what you are for what you think you are. This mind is not something separate from you, but your own charming imagination, the body of the Father, and the sole redeeming power of the universe. You can save yourself from your current state or attach yourself to it. Christ is defined in Scripture as the power of God and wisdom within you, as your hope of glory. All things are made by this power, 
without it nothing that is made is made. Thus, Christ, who is your own wonderful human imagination, is yourself. When looking with the human eye, you see an external world, seemingly independent of your conception. But when you see the world through the me of imagination, you understand its meaning. Turn inward, put yourself to the test, and you will discover that you are your own saviour. Then you will begin to assert mastery over your imagination, you will cease to bend to the dictates of the external world, and you will begin to realise your dreams. A tamed man is one who disciplines himself, who masters his forces in negative emotions. If this is the case, discipline yourself to rise out of the mire and mud in which you have lived, and rise with your disciples to a state of joy and the body of love. Do it, and you will have mastered true value in this world. You may seem to be a man or woman of flesh and blood. Your father, mother, sisters, and brothers are known. But I tell you that you are far greater than the greatest man on earth, for you are Jesus Christ. Imaginative love is asleep in your fleshly body. Awaken the love that you are by affirming that your spirit is Christ. Claim your pearl of great price, for it is the key that will open the house of the heavenly treasure with your spirit as Christ. You will find that you are no longer capable of having negative and unpleasant thoughts, and you will no longer desire to seek revenge. The Bible is your autobiography, for you are Jesus, the great Jehovah of the Old Testament, who finds fulfillment in the new by using the mind of man. You are asleep. It is time to awaken and free yourself from the mind of man that says, I can, I have been, I will be. Instead, affirm your divine heritage, which is the Spirit of God that says, I am. Nothing is impossible for God, and nothing is impossible for you when you affirm to be the Spirit of God. This world is like a machine where your actions and reactions are automatic. Separate yourself from your wonderful human imagination to elevate yourself to ever higher levels of your own consciousness. If you don't like the events of your life, change them by controlling your imagination and state of being. When you know what you want, ask yourself where you would sleep if you had it, what your world would be like. A friend or acquaintance answering your questions filling your mind fall asleep in the place you desire. Look at the world from that perspective and listen to your friend rejoice now that your desire has become a physical reality. So believe in Christ, the power to bring all things into submission to you, and it will be done for you. Remember that there is no mighty fate before which you must bow, and you do not have to accept life on the basis of the external world. Turn inward. You have a purpose in life, a goal for yourself. If you have one, start now to elevate yourself to its level by reminding yourself. Do not strive to be a better man or woman, but rather transcend your current level of being. Your goal must be so important that you cannot forget it, and your hunger for its expression so intense that you cannot and will not let a thought pass until it is embodied. The Bible tells us that many are called, but few are chosen. The word chosen means to separate, to decide. Every day you have the opportunity to choose a new idea, to enter into a new state from which to think, feel and act. An infinite number of emotions and thoughts belong to you, but due to the purpose with which you want to identify, only a few emotions and thoughts are chosen. Begin to elevate yourself by letting go of your old beliefs and restrictions. Choose the thoughts and emotions you want to express, and enter into your desire through the act of feeling. In Mark chapter 11, two disciples are told, Go to the village where you will find a colt tied, on which no one has sat. Untie it, and bring it to me. If anyone asks you why you are doing this, say that the Lord needs it. So he mounted the unbridled donkey and entered the city of Jerusalem. Now the animal found at every crossroads is not a colt or a donkey, but the permanent and dominant emotion of the individual. Desiring to express a new emotion, it may be difficult for you to mount it, but you will always find your emotions tied to the crossroads of life. If you have never felt safe, you may not be able to mount the animal emotion of security for more than a few seconds. But the important thing is to try, for controlled imagination can ride any emotion to the city of peace, the embodiment of the ideal state. An emotion is correct or incorrect in relation to your desire or dream. If you feel anxious committing to your desire, you're heading in the wrong direction and will never reach it. 
but if the feeling is natural, correct, and persists in your assumption, it will become a fact. Sometimes even when your goal seems natural, you may allow doubts to creep in and divert you from your destination. When this happens, do not condemn yourself. Simply get back on that emotion and ride it again, for the beast is untamed and must be ridden until you both become one. For your consciousness is reality. What you are conscious of at this moment, you are. If you want to be something other than what you remember, the desired state is as real as the one you are conscious of now. Enter the new state by being conscious of being. Persist. Find the feeling of the new state and ride it to Jerusalem. Scripture calls man to remember himself by associating with his goal and walking in its direction. Only to the extent that he disciplines himself will he be able to embody his goal. In Mark chapter 11, it is said that whatever you desire, believe that you have received it, and it will be granted to you. And whenever you pray, forgive, so that your desire may be fulfilled. Find the quality you thought was in the other, eliminate it from yourself, then place in its place the feeling you wish to express. When this is done, you have reached the state of your answered prayer. Now prayer is conditioned by the belief that it is already fulfilled. Desire is your springboard. Standing on your desired state, you may find the plank wavers or the ground sways beneath your feet. But if you persist in being conscious of having attained your desire, even if your reason and external senses deny it, what you are conscious of will become your reality. Tonight, form for yourself a beautiful goal and feel its fulfillment. Associate with this feeling by being conscious of it. Do it and you will be blessed by God, who is yourself. Say to yourself, I and the Father are one. Your inner being is what men call God. He is never too far to be near, for he is your own wonderful human consciousness. All things, when admitted into your consciousness, manifest themselves by their light, but something must be admitted first. If you are conscious of being defeated, the thought will manifest, and you will be. If you feel insecure and persist in that state of mind, you will sink into your depths, for everything that manifests is an externalized consciousness. What thought dominates your mind at this moment, regardless of which you have consented to? You do not need to perpetuate the thought that enters the mind. It does not contaminate you. You can consent to any thought, whether it corrupts or blesses you, but every thought will manifest if held. The state you currently reside in was only a thought before you entered it, just as the state you desire now and can be realized with the same ease. Accept the challenge, formulate your goal, and elevate yourself in consciousness towards its achievement. Think of it as real, and it will be, for all things are possible to a thought. To remember oneself is to remember one's goal, so throughout the day ask yourself where you are psychologically. Your reality lives in a psychological country where you can walk in the mud, the valley, or the mountaintop. Choose today the state you wish to enter, feel your state of mind, and acknowledge its fulfillment. Walk faithful to this assumption, and even if your reason and senses deny it, your persistence will make it a fact. You are all imagination, the total sum of your reactions to life. It is the sole cause and explanation of the events you encounter. If you do not like your world, change your reaction towards it. Life will be easier. Be brutally honest with yourself. Acknowledge your reactions to what has been created by you and reflected in you. Resolve to react only positively. Thoughts produce positive effects. By seeing your world differently, your consciousness changes, thus altering future events. Your dream is always ready to materialize, but as a dream, it is incapable of being born. It must have a human father, and you are the human imagination that Scripture calls Mary. For you are capable of conceiving an idea and bringing it forth without the aid of any man. Man is called the mold of God, and your I am is God. Like Mary, you conceive a desire from God by enclosing your secret within you. Walk faithful to your concept, and it will bear fruit. All are the Mary of the Bible, her name means water, washing your mind of all literal concepts of the Bible. You baptize yourself and are born of water. So, by living faithful to your desire, you are the virgin bearing what was conceived by the Holy Spirit in desire. Chapter 12. Your Destiny 
Love is the only true power, and your power is proportional to your love. When Scripture speaks of the violent who take the kingdom by force, it does not refer to violent characters, but to the power of love that gives the strength to rise to a higher level of consciousness. There is no final destiny, for psychologically understood life is eternal. It is the appeasement of a hunger whose main force is love. Man rises above the springs of his desire with each level of the vertical line of the cross within him, organizing in such a way as to raise him through desire to higher and higher levels of himself. Like all true masters, I teach the art of overcoming the violence that characterizes the current level of humanity. In many ways, we have progressed more than our ancestors, but we have remained as violent as they. My wish for you is to break your violent and negative nature, for if you do, you will rise in consciousness and find your destiny awaiting you at every moment. You are always given the opportunity to demonstrate your ability to overcome violence by assuming that consciousness is the only reality and that nothing has reality except the consciousness you have of it. In this assumption, you will find the only cause of life's phenomena. Your reactions to life define you, and as long as you continue thus, your life will remain the same. Your world is but a projection of your state of consciousness. Consciousness is the only substance and cause of life's phenomena, so it is impossible for a change to occur until there is a change in consciousness. Everything you are conscious of, whether good, bad or indifferent, projects into your world through your consciousness of self. If your goal is security, you must establish a consciousness of security so strong that you can feel it and say to yourself, I am secure. You are free to consent to violence and offense, or to security and mental peace. What you consent to in consciousness will be yours. Your goal is always above the state in which you currently find yourself. Throughout the day, ask yourself if you are conscious of your goal, and you will discover how close or far away you are from it. If you are not conscious of being secure at this moment, affirm that you are, persist, and perhaps tomorrow, as you observe your day, you will find that consciousness becomes stronger and stronger. Learn to be alone by affirming, I am what I am, because I am conscious of being. Cease looking at others and start observing your reactions to their behavior. Turn inward and change your violent nature for a nature of love. Do it, and you will climb the staircase of life and reach your destiny. It is impossible to embody a new level of thought through the efforts of another. The rock on which you must stand is consciousness. All other ground is sinking sand. It is the height of folly to expect the embodiment of a new concept to arise from the evolutionary process. What is sought must be embodied before it can become visible. There is a great difference between mentally knowing something and spiritually knowing it. I can teach you the law of identical harvest. You can read how to apply the law through my books and mentally know the necessary steps to have wealth. But you will never know wealth spiritually until you consciously say to yourself, I am rich and act like a rich man, taking the decisions, thoughts and feelings of a rich man. A man is sick because he is conscious of being so. Let the sick man say, I am well, the hungry man say, I am full, the troubled man say, I am at peace, and his correct consciousness will produce what he is conscious of being. If you want to know what love is, you must become loving, for you cannot know a thing until you are it. I teach the art of being, the art of spiritually knowing a state. In the book of Joel, we are told that the weak man should say, I am strong. This applies not only to the physical body, but to every aspect of your being. Seek to know your desire spiritually, for only when the spirit feels the naturalness of desire will it project into your external world. Always remember that you will never experience what you refuse to affirm as true of yourself. Awaken, become increasingly aware of what is happening within you. Lift your cross, and without turning to the left or right to seek help from another, turn inward and consciously claim your goal. Then observe how it becomes a reality. If you do not apply my words, you will remain where you are, for you must be a doer to be blessed by your works. Desire is the hidden identity, for you are already what you want to be. You would never have sought me if you had not found me. The level of being you seek can be found by changing your reactions to life to match the level you wish to express. There is no need to apply pressure, pull strings, 
or ask someone to help you. All you have to do is change your attitude. After clearly defining your goal, sincerely observe your inner dialogues and reactions to it. When your thoughts and reactions are disciplined, your self will elevate you to a higher level and accomplish your goal. Do not condemn your neighbor, but awaken them. This is done first by awakening yourself, by rising in consciousness. By rising, you bring all men with you. Think of your wonderful human imagination as the unlimited vertical line of the cross with time as the cross section. You are free to ascend or rise on the cross, but you cannot rise until you deny your limitations. Christianity is a way of living with the eyes of the Spirit wide open. Embrace Christianity by becoming aware of what it is. If you do not like what you find in your life, rearrange your thoughts by changing your consciousness, shape the state you desire, and occupy it in your mind, in your actions, and in your feelings. This is how you transform yourself. By submitting to the desired state, observe your world transform into the ideal held in your consciousness. Where you stand, the ground is sacred because you are the temple of the living God. Cleanse your mind of the trees of traditional thought, become pure of heart, and you will see that consciousness is everything, and everything is consciousness. You will discover that the state you are conscious of is the state that manifests. No matter if reason justifies acts of violence, do not accept them. If you do, you contribute to the state, and it is a state you do not want to experience. It is told that Jesus entered the temple and cleared it of the moneylenders, saying, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. This is not a material temple. You are the temple of the living God, and the Bible is your biography. Thieves have taken possession of your house of prayer by placing false values within it. Free your mind from all beliefs in external causes, and restore the true value of consciousness, the only true power of love. Chapter 13 Your Biography The Bible The most wonderful book in the world is the most misunderstood. It is your personal biography. It is not a record of historical events as the teachers teach. Its writings were never meant to be interpreted in that way. The people recorded therein may never have existed, and the events may never have occurred on earth. The Bible speaks of the inner heaven and the outer earth. Its story begins thus. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God said, Let there be light. And there was light. The light spoken of comes from the heaven within you. The light shining on your earth is the light of your consciousness, and it shines from within. The outer man called earth is dark, while the inner man called heaven is the being that was in the beginning with God and was God, but who sleeps deeply. The Bible tells of how you are lifted from your current level to a higher being. In the Old Testament we find the Pentateuch, the first five books as the Law of Moses. These books were written in 500 BC, while the earliest known date of the New Testament is AD 170. The first known New Testament did not include the epistles to the Hebrews or the books of Peter and James. It is James who speaks of the double-minded man, declaring that he can receive nothing from the Lord. Then we have the Apocrypha, which consists of early Christian writings excluded from the Jewish and Protestant Old Testament. These writings give four biographical sketches of a principle rather than a man. The Bible took 900 years to reach its current form, so when you read it, Always keep in mind that it speaks of the kingdom of heaven within you. It speaks of the revelation of an eternal principle called Christ, which is your hope of glory. All the characters recorded in the scriptures are aspects of your mind that you will discover as you fulfill your destiny, which is to realize the scriptures within you. No man called Moses ever wrote any commandments on stones, but the word stone means literal truth. The man of literal mind is the first and he is given certain laws to follow, thus blocking the psychological truth. As long as you see things outside as facts, your mind is blocked, and you are unable to understand their psychological meanings. But when you thirst for truth and begin to read, the Spirit of God will move upon that psychological sea of understanding, and your life will take that truth, the psychological water, 
and turn it into wine into the state of Moses. The true name of God will be revealed to you. Take his name, I am, as your rod of understanding, and strike the stone of literal truth with it, and the psychological water will flow out, filling your mouth. By practicing my words, you will convert the psychological water of truth I have given you into the wine of the Spirit. <laughs> now the garments mentioned in the Scriptures are those of the Spirit and not of the body. John the Baptist is described in the third chapter of Matthew as someone called Elijah. In the second book of Kings, it is said that he wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. Hair and skin are the most external things a man possesses. Therefore, John the Baptist represents the outer man who has not yet clothed himself inwardly. Jesus is the inner man wearing seamless garments woven from above, and those who wear his garments are always in the king's house. The New Testament teaches a complete and radical transformation of oneself and calls it renaissance, but John the Baptist calls it repentance and exhorts us to change our thinking about the kingdom of heaven. It is said that he lived in the wilderness with wild animals. Well, you are John living in the wilderness when you have no direction of your own and let your animal emotions overflow. But when you begin to tame your animal instincts and call them to discipleship, strength will come from within and you will be baptized with the water of truth. Speaking in parables, Matthew compares the kingdom of heaven to a sower who sows his seeds in different types of soil. The sower mentioned here is not an external being to you, for you are the sower and the seed is your own wonderful human imagination. God is the sower who said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Then he slept and annexed the outer man's brain as seed for his harvest, as Adam or the red earth. Man is the psychological soil upon which the kingdom of heaven is planted. In the parable we are told that when someone hears the word but does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. But the one who listens with understanding bears fruit and yields a hundredfold. Another parable is told, comparing the kingdom of heaven to a man who, having sowed good seed in his field, fell asleep, and his enemy came and sowed weeds. These weeds are false teachings planted in the mind, false beliefs and concepts that can be bound and burned when you turn inward to discover the truth and the kingdom of heaven to be yourself. In the eleventh chapter of Genesis, it is told how the Tower of Babel was built with stone, literal truth, and brick, man-made concepts. Before the building was erected, there was only one language and few words, but during construction, Confusion reigned and soon no one understood each other's language. This tower exists today in the form of small mystical and occult groups in the world. You have no enemies except those of your own household. By realizing false teachings, you believe that your security depends on the money you have in the bank, or that your health depends on the pills you take, or that your happiness depends on another. By acting thus, you build your own Tower of Babel, but I tell you that your consciousness of being is the only reality of the state you are in, and all enemies of that state are within you. In your aspirations, Matthew tells you that your attitude of being is blessed when clothed in soft garments, for when you wear the seamless robe of imagination, you are free to ascend more and more towards the Garden of Eden within you. You are the gardener of your mind, where you plant the seeds of your own choosing. As a man of imagination, become aware of being what you have planted, and your harvest will be abundant, for you always become what you contemplate. In chapter 16, Matthew tells the story of the unbelieving Pharisees and Sadducees who ask for a sign from heaven. Then we are told to beware and guard ourselves from the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. These are not men but mental attitudes. If you believe that you must live in the right neighborhood, know the right people, that your skin must be the right color, or that you must be in the right place at the right time, your attitude is what the scriptures call pharisaical. Beware of this kind of thinking, for the path to a higher level of being is always internal and never external. Mark tells us that the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls, who finds one pearl of great price, sells all he has, and buys it. As long as you cling to the thought of something external to your own thought, you do not have enough money to buy the pearl of great price. You must be willing to sell all your belief in something external to yourself. The path to the kingdom always leads inward 
and you cannot travel on this path wearing garments made of skin and hair. You must be clothed in your wedding garment, which is always woven from within. It is also said that the kingdom of heaven is like a net cast into the sea that gathers fish of all kinds, good or bad. When brought to shore, the good are put into vessels and the bad are thrown away. Be discerning, carefully select your thoughts and reject the bad and negative ones. Allow only what is of good report to fill your mind, and you will be the good fisherman. In the same chapter 13 of Matthew, the question is asked, Have you understood all these things? It is my prayer that you answer, as they did, and say yes. It is said, Do not put new wine into old wineskins, or the skins will burst and the wine will be spilled and the skins will be destroyed. But put new wine into fresh wineskins, so that both are preserved. The old thoughts, the traditions of men, the belief in a power outside of oneself, are the old wineskins that must be burst and allow the beliefs to spill and be destroyed. The new wine, obtained by the fulfillment of the promise from within, must be put into your consciousness, fresh and new, so that both are preserved. Man does not evolve outwardly, there is only one presence, one essence in man called consciousness. This power can be awakened if your word of God is not hindered by belief in a power outside of yourself. Awaken, abandon all false beliefs and start at the beginning. This is the psychological history of your soul and it tells you that the first thing you must do is change your thinking. I bring you a new idea concerning the cause of life's phenomena, telling you that you are not what you believe to be, but that you possess infinite possibilities of inner growth. Your destiny is always reached by an internal direction, which is that of attitudes of faith. Whether your attitude is good, bad or indifferent when you assume an attitude, its fulfillment depends on nothing external to yourself. But when you depend on external laws to determine your attitude, you are at the level of Elijah and John the Baptist. Their teachings were wonderful, but they were of stone, and the state was violent. John the Baptist cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. He must overcome his state by becoming conscious of his inner self and disciplining his attitudes just as you do. This is your destiny. You are destined to awaken within yourself while ascending the ladder of Jacob's states to ever higher levels of consciousness of your own being. The state of consciousness you wish to express must be acquired by selling all your beliefs in an external power to yourself. Once freed from this obstacle, you will move with faith towards your desired state. In the book of John, Jesus as a teacher makes this statement, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Then he adds this thought, It is good that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come. Here we see a teaching that seems to be transmitted from the outside, but it is necessary for your belief in any external master to vanish, for only then can you find yourself within. As your belief in yourself grows, your heart will find peace. There is only one cause, only one I am. I am the Trinity. In the unthinkable origin, I am God the Father, and in expression, the Son, for imagination is born of consciousness. I am in universal interpretation, in infinite immanence, in eternal procession. I am the true definition of immanence, earlier than now and closer than here. Therefore, I am the comforter. What could be more comforting than to know that you need not wait for your dreams to come true? They are nearer than here and sooner than now. Let this knowledge be your comforter. If there were a limit to what is contained within your infinite state, it would not be infinite. In chapter 23 of Exodus, this statement is made, Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. I tell you, you do the same when you maintain your mind in a negative state. Turn your attention away from need and lack, from all negative states, and turn it toward the realization and abundance of positive states. Thus, your desire will no longer simmer on a slow fire, but in the warmth of truth. In chapter 14, The Human Spirit, the Bible speaks of the infinite struggle of the human spirit to assert its supremacy over the natural mind by believing in the reality of the external world. The natural mind governs the sleeping man, while the human spirit is God in man, struggling to awaken and assert its supremacy over all. 
The poet Faust knew this when he said, Two souls dwell in my breast, one longs for heaven, the other clings to earth. In chapter 25 of Genesis, this struggle is told as the story of Isaac's two sons, Esau and Jacob. Esau, coming first, as the outer skin and hair, is recognized as his personality, while the smooth-skinned Jacob is his human spirit. We are told that when their mother, Rebekah, realized the struggle within her, she inquired of the Lord, who told her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Your outer world is known by reason of your critical faculties, so you can always discover the psychological state in which you reside by observing your daily thoughts. Each state has its limits and restrictions, from which there seems to be no escape. If you believe that you are the state in which you now reside, you can never get out of it. But the story of Esau and Jacob tells you that there is a way to escape and how to accomplish it. Esau exists in your mind as the outer world of facts, and Jacob as the inner world of imagination. As a father, you have the power to give either of the two sons the right to be born, always watching from where you place your attention. You are called to turn your gaze away from the outer world by blinding yourself to it, then to deceive yourself by imagining the world as you want it to be. This is done by closing your eyes to the so-called facts of life and turning your thoughts inward. Now, clothe your thoughts with the feeling of reality until they are as solid and real as those you know through your external senses. Once this is done, you, Isaac, have given your son Jacob the right to be born. Your objective world always reflects your internal and subjective state. Therefore, it is impossible to change your external world until you have changed your internal subjective state. Knowing the state you want to occupy, immerse yourself completely in it, as if you were a sponge and you the water capable of entering and being absorbed by it. Lose yourself so much in the feeling of satisfaction, fullness and goodness, that when you open your eyes and return to your external world, you know that you have yielded its primogeniture, even if you have deceived yourself into imagining that the state is real, you have given it the power to be born. How this will come about, we do not know. Only your Father who is in heaven knows, for he has ways of making your desired state a reality, and his ways cannot be discovered. Now there is an essence within you that is deeply asleep and must be awakened. When you give to Jacob the power you have given to Esau, you will notice that Esau no longer reacts violently but becomes passive. Then you will know that you have caused an inversion of the order. By being conscious of being Jacob, persist in seeing what you want to see and living what you want to live, thus awakening your true essence to the truth that the world belongs to you and everything in it. You are the Rebecca spoken of in the Bible, and you are constantly giving birth to your sons, Esau and Jacob, who are always at war with each other. The elder is the world you know through your critical faculties, while the younger is the one you know subjectively, the person you wish to become, struggling to be born. As long as you look at and accept the external world as the only reality, you will never give birth to your fulfilled desire. You must turn your attention inward and subjectively appropriate your objective reality. When you read chapters 25 and 27 of Genesis, remember that all the characters recorded therein are in your mind. Even if you are not married, you are still giving birth to twins. The world in which you live is the representation of your state of consciousness. This state is your firstborn, who must be supplanted by your second son or desired state. Throughout the Bible, you will find that there is always a second son who replaces the first, Jacob replaces Esau, Jesus replaces John the Baptist, and the human spirit replaces human matter. When you know what you want, define it as vividly as possible, then shut out its externalized state by sending it to marry. You cannot touch your second son or idea until you do. This is done by turning your attention away from all thoughts of negation and clothing your desire with the skins of reality. With this intensity, I ask you to clothe yourself with the feeling that you are already the person you wish to be. Now, stretch out your imaginary hands and touch the objects. Listen with your imaginary ears. See with your imaginary eyes. 
walk in your imaginary world while savoring and feeling the objects therein. Your creative power can be used for anything, whether it be a fur coat or a new hat. I hope you will use it for a noble state, such as greatness in your chosen profession, whatever it may be. Now let us examine chapter 38 of Genesis, where the story of Judah and Tamar is told. Judah means praise, and Tamar means a desired state, or an oasis of palm trees. Like Tamar, you thirst for your desire. Offer yourself to yourself by entering into your desired state and making it real, melting into it. Feel the satisfaction that your prayer has been answered and that you are the woman called Tamar and the man called Judah. You will find another story of twins in chapter 48 of Genesis. This is the story of Manasseh, which means to forgive, and his brother Ephraim, which means to affirm. One is negation and the other affirmation. When you divert your attention from your problem by affirming its solution, the problem is momentarily forgotten. Persist in your affirmation, not repetitively, but in feeling. By feeling the solution, the problem dies for lack of attention. This teaching is not for the complacent, but for the human spirit that is hungry and thirsty for thinking rightly. As it is said in the fifth chapter of Matthew, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Awaken the Jacob within you by observing your thoughts critically. Think of yourself as two beings, one who sees with the organs of the senses and the other who sees through the mind of imagination. The man of senses is a creature of habits, dynamic and active, but through daily self-observation, criticism, he can be brought to a passive state and his power transferred to the man of imagination. There are always two decided ways of seeing the same world, namely the one who sees with external organs and the one who knows only mentally. Your desire is mental and formless. It is your second son, the one who will supplant your current world. When your power of awareness turns inward, you have a desire or dream, a wish that consumes you and that you want to fulfill. Now, allow this desire of your mind to know that its fulfillment is based on feeling. Ask yourself how you would feel if your desire were fulfilled now. Whatever the problem, its solution is within. Turn your attention to the realization of your desire and clothe it with the skins of objective reality. This is the technique of inversion and should never be taken lightly. For the moment you feel in your state, you instantly take upon yourself the fruits of that state. I hope by now you know how to clothe your subjective desire. Think of your desire as Jacob, then clothe it in its materialization. Its proportionality to your feeling of naturalness is important. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Humanity cannot enter it, but its imagination can. When you detach from what you are currently attached to, there must be a separation, for only the human spirit is called, and only the human spirit can pass alone through this self. Well, what requires a state of consciousness to produce its effect cannot be accomplished without that state. Once you have entered a state, do not worry about how it will externalize, for everything emerges through consciousness. You never create a state, all states have been created before the world existed. Instead, you enter into a state, and it simply shows itself. Enter the state of poverty by saying, I am poor, and you will see its proof displayed on your spatial screen. This does not generate health, wealth, or happiness. States are already there, fully furnished, and ready to be occupied immediately. My words are true, but truth itself can do nothing. It must be applied. Unapplied truth is like a lamp without oil, but applied truth is a lamp whose oil never runs dry. Remember that there are no accidents or other causes than the imaginary. If an accident is fatal, it is an involuntary suicide. As we are told, no one takes my life. I lay it down myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. An accident is not a force external to the individual's consciousness. No one knows man except the spirit of man that dwells within him, and man is simply the sum total of his reactions to life. No one comes into your world unless you call them. You have the power to call anything into existence because you are the author of the drama called life. The Bible refers to God as the Father, as I am, or the light, or I am, but the word means consciousness, which, like an atom, has no age. 
Consciousness is a living substance that has neither beginning nor end, but simply manifests itself in its own arrangements. The external conscious man ages, but the substance of consciousness never changes. Before the world was, I am, and when it ceases to be, it will always be. The external man can say I was or I will be, but the internal human spirit only says I am. By knowing your dream, persist in the thought that you already have it until your thoughts become habitual. If you do not, you will find yourself thinking again in your old way, and you will perpetuate the fact of never seeing your desire externalized. Chapter 15. The Feeling of Self Your journey in this world of decay and death began with your feeling of self, and where you place that feeling, there you live. You can place your feeling of self in the mud of negation, or in the magnificent terrain of positive assumption. Your feeling of self is always with you. It is your slave and your saviour. For wherever you go, there I am too. The ninth chapter of Numbers begins with Moses receiving instructions from the Lord on how to lead a tabernacle, or tent of testimony, and move it through the desert. He was told that during the day a cloud would cover the tabernacle, and at night it would appear as a column of fire. Whenever the cloud lifted, the children of Israel were to move to where the cloud settled, and they were to stay there. The people may mount once a week, once a month or more, but when they mount, the children of Israel must travel. A tabernacle is a mobile and skin-covered place of worship. You are this temple tabernacle, and the Spirit of God dwells within you as yourself. A cloud is a witness of water or psychological truth that covers the self and testifies to what it speaks of. The cloud does not move in time, but it is lifted by the self that covers, according to my senses. I am now at the Palace Hotel. I will lift the cloud of my testimony by removing the feeling of self from the proof of my senses, and I will move by placing myself in a predetermined state, and all my world will move with me, clothing me with feeling. The cloud covers me as I testify. The testimony into which I am now entering is possible that you have placed your feeling of self in an undesired state, and unless you lift this cloud that covers you, you are anchored there and unable to change the circumstances of your life. Well, this lifting of the cloud and the placement of your feeling of self in a more desirable state involves a death, for when the cloud lifts, it breaks or kills the cycle of recurrence in which you were. Movement can only be detected as a change of position relative to another body, and all the movement spoken of in the scriptures is psychological. Every state exists in this psychological land from which yourself travels. All you have to do is extract yourself from where it is now and place it in a predetermined state. But how will you know that you have moved? By using a frame of reference. While you are quietly sitting in your chair, you can lift your cloud by placing the sensation of self in a completely different psychological state. No one can see this movement, for it is a spiritual journey. While you are sitting, seek affirmation of your movement in that of the people who are there. They are surprised to see you, they rejoice for you, they are a little jealous. Observe until you see the expressions on their faces. If there is a change in their feeling towards you, towards yourself, you will find that there has been an automatic alteration in your expression of life. During the day you wear your tunic of truth, the cloud, but as soon as you begin to meditate, the brain becomes bright. This is the column of fire of the night. Remember that I am the truth, and wherever you place your feeling of self, there you must remain. In chapter 34 of Deuteronomy, it is said that Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho, where all the land was shown to him as being his. The word Moses means to extract. It is not a man but your creative power that can extract from you any state where you have placed yourself, by striking the rock and producing water. The word Moab means mother, father, which is your I am in your current state. Your Moab may say, I am defeated, I am sick, I am impoverished. Nebo means to prophesy and your desire for the feeling of self is like contemplating. When you enter your desired state, observe your Jericho, for it will have an intoxicating scent. That is what the word Jericho means. Having become aware, stay in your chosen state until you have a reaction that satisfies you. 
A violent reaction produces a bad smell, while a charming reaction indicates Jericho and a charming smell. You will see that Jericho is not a place near the east, but a state that produces the emotion of the realization of your dreams within you. In chapter 14 of the book of John, Jesus speaks to Peter, saying, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Otherwise I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. This is not about one man addressing another, but oneself speaking to oneself. You are Jesus, the imagination telling itself that there are countless states of consciousness into which you can enter, and you invite yourself to choose the state you want to dwell in. After selecting the state, imagination will go and prepare it for you, so that you may return as you should, for wherever you dwell in imagination, there you will also reside in the flesh. If you believe in what I have told you, finish changing your feeling of self. No power can prevent you from realizing your dream except you, and no man can force you to enter a state. You have the power to choose your state and enter it by bringing it to life, or to exit a state by sustaining it. The decision and its consequences are yours and yours alone. The day you can become an observing self, observing your reactions and seeing the observer and the observed as two distinct beings, you will know that you can enter any state and it will manifest. You will know that all the mansions of the house are yours. I am your consciousness contains all the creation of I am that emerges from imagination. Where there is no consciousness, there is no imagination. When you enter a state, your I am has a psychological experience. When you think of a state, you have a subject and an object. But when you experience a state, you have unity. Tonight, mentally review your day. Can you remember the people you saw this morning? If your reaction towards them is the same as before, then you have not changed your feelings. Your friends and relations are your frame of reference. Use them in your journey. The order of the first chapter of Joshua is, When you set out, do not turn to the right or to the left, so that you may prosper wherever you go, for I, the Lord your God, am with you. Thus, remain in the state you desire until your entire being is imbued with its reaction, so that you may reap your reward. I, your consciousness, am with you, and I am the Lord your God. The teaching of truth deals with the feeling of self, for only feeling can bring about change. If you continue to have the same reactions, you have not changed your feelings. Your world forever adjusts to your inner assumption. Remember your goal a thousand times throughout the day. Be attentive to your thoughts about it, and break with all those that do not please you. If you are not successful, it is because you do not practice this truth or apply this law. You are the temple of the living God, and the Spirit of God dwells in you. What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? Come out from among them and separate them. And divine imagination is one and the same thing. They are not two. Your human imagination has the power to turn your water of life into the wine of eternity. You will do this when you release your imagination from its bonds of limitation. For when imagination is truly free, it can work miracles. The Bible calls imagination the savior of man and identifies this wonderful benefactor as Christ. When Christ awakens and is born in you, your human imagination becomes a divine vision called Christ. Your individual imagination is the mediator between the father of all life and the external world called man. After imagining wealth, it is the human imagination that walks on the water of life and denies the proof of the senses, affirming, I am rich. Its persistence serves as a mediator between God and man. The characters of all scriptures live in the mind. When you read the Bible, turn to yourself and ask in what state I would be if I did this. When you read the story of Moses, affirm that you are him, assume the state of faith. When you read about Abraham, you are Joseph the dreamer and Thomas the skeptic, and you are destined to be Jesus Christ, the awakened and resurrected imagination. The skin is the most external thing a man can wear. When you read about someone wearing camel's hair or leather, you read about someone whose mind is attached to the outside, whose philosophy of life is external and entirely dependent on others. In chapter 5 of Mark, 
the story is told of an innocent man who lived without clothes among the dead and cut himself with stones. When imagination awakened, the innocent cried out, Do not cast me out, and when asked his name, he replied, My name is Legion because we are many. A being not yet spiritually individuated is innocent because he does not know what he is doing. He is legion because he has countless eyes in him, saying, for example, I am sick, I am poor, I am tired, I am weak, I am mistreated, to name just a few, living among the dead and sleeping the sleep of death. His literal understanding of life and its cause are stones that cut and bite. But the spiritual man has a self-determined personal history, a predetermined I in the kingdom of the spirit. He becomes what he wants when consciousness turns inward, the spirit awakens to its true identity, and then rejecting all belief in an external cause, he clothes his spirit justly and sits at the feet of the one who cast him out. A miracle is only a name given by those who do not have faith in the works of faith. The story of a man named Jairus is told. His daughter was considered dead, but the awakened imagination ignored the thought and said, Fear not, only believe. Returning home, he asked her why she was crying. The child was not dead, but sleeping. Then he touched the child and said, I say to you, arise immediately. She got up and walked. Then Jesus addressed the parents and said to them, Give her something to eat. Every state, every desire, every idea is your child. Looking at desire, it seems dead to you, the natural man. But your spiritual self knows that desire is not dead but asleep, waiting to be touched for its resurrection. With your desire, the living child within you through the power of touch, you must be fed to accomplish its birth. This is done by directing your attention towards it. Let's move on to chapter 5 of the book of John, where the story is about the pool of Bethesda and its five porticos. The story is of a sick man waiting for the movement of the water by an angel, believing that whoever enters the pool first after the movement will be healed. After asking him if he wanted to be healed, the awakened imagination told him, Rise, take up your bed and walk, and instantly the man was healed, and taking up his bed he walked. The word Bethesda means house of mercy, and the pool mentioned here is the conscience that must be stirred by an angel or messenger of God. Every idea you have is that angel disturbing consciousness. In the pool, one enters by a simple assumption and stirs while bathing. I am is always in the first person and present tense. No one can put you in the pool by affirmation. Although seeming powerless, you rely on the five porticos or senses when you accept their evidence and refuse to change your consciousness. No one needs to help you. Who could be the first in the pool but the self that is your I? Knowing what you want, rise up, assuming your desire is already fulfilled or healed, and so it shall be. In chapter 17, John rejoices, saying, I have finished the work which you gave me to do. Glorify yourself in me with the glory I had in you before the world was. I have kept those you gave me, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition. I consecrate myself for them so that they also may be consecrated in truth. For I dwell in them, and they in me, and we are one. The work you have given yourself is to awaken from this dream of life, having assumed the limitations of the flesh. You will awaken to your true identity and become your own glory when your outer self becomes passive and your inner self dynamic. The son of perdition is the belief in loss. Knowing that all things exist in the human imagination, nothing can be lost. When you realize this truth, you will no longer believe in loss, thus fulfilling the scriptures. The hardest to understand is that there is no one outside of yourself believing that others should change. I worked on them thinking the world would be much better if they were different. Then I became aware and sanctified myself. They sanctified themselves because I dwell in them and they dwell in me and we are one. There is no one else to change except yourself. By controlling your thoughts and allowing only those that align with your ideal, your world will reconfigure in harmony with them. Remember that you can only be aware of a fault or greatness in others if that fault or greatness is within you. Eliminate lack from your own being, place greatness within you, and observe how your world changes, reflecting your shift in consciousness. In chapter 16 of Matthew, the disciples were asked who men say the Son of Man is. They answered, Some say John the Baptist, 
others Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He then asked them, But you, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. At this moment, you might concern yourself with what others think of you, but once awakened to your true divine identity, you will not care. You will know by experience that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Flesh and blood will not reveal it to you, but your Father, who is in the inner heavens, will reveal it to you. Through this knowledge, the keys to the kingdom will be given to you, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Having found the answer to the eternal question, Who am I? No man or woman can take this knowledge from you. This wisdom comes from the abundant within. If you merge into the state of your imagination, it will raise you above the flesh. It is a journey from innocence to imagination and experience. You are already the person you want to be. Claim it in your desired state. Persevere, 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 for at the moment of non-reaction circumstances change. We rise through an energy others call effort, for it takes energy to act and react throughout the day. Constantly recall your goal by continually identifying with it. Let your reactions flow towards your goal. Seek deeper and deeper understanding of what you now believe. Trust that everyone has a purpose to become greater. Do not limit yourself to any manual. Cease to believe that one man alone can write a definitive book on truth. Begin to put an end to that. No one can grow without outgrowing a different attitude. That's the solution to your problems. With your new internal direction or attitude, escape what surrounds you. No one else changes except yourself. So begin to change yourself today. Luke speaks of you when he makes this statement. When their eyes were opened, they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. When yourself awakens, you will find what you have been seeking, and belief in an external power will disappear. In Francis Thompson's poem, The Hound of Heaven, he tells how he fled by night and day through the arches of the years, through the labyrinthine paths of his mind, only to find in the end that it was his own self. The eyes of man are blind, though constantly harassed by the hound of heaven. He cannot believe in the non-historicity of the Bible, but clings to his little beliefs, even though he doesn't know what to make of them. People do not seek truth. They seek only supports for their opinions about it. But I tell you, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to confront man with his father, daughter with mother, and daughter-in-law with mother-in-law, for a man's enemies are those of his own household. When truth comes, it puts man at war with himself, for he will discover he can no longer tolerate what he once believed to be true. Begin now, and listen in silence to the words you want to hear. With a new internal direction, you can change the course of your life and free yourself from the prisons of your mind. You can see yourself better by looking at the face of another, but you cannot judge one who is not awakened from the dream of life, living in his physical, animal, reactive, mechanical world. He cannot change his thought like an automaton. Chapter 17 Awaken, you who sleep. In the book of Ephesians it is said, Awake, you who sleep, and arise from the dead, and Christ will enlighten you. This awakening and rising occur through inner development, for the Bible is your autobiography. It is you who inspired the prophets to record their visions, and it is you who will fulfill their prophecies in a first-person, present-tense experience. When you read the Bible, grit your mental teeth, study its message, and your understanding will deepen as you journey through life. The Bible teaches self-help, seeks no leader outside, but looks within by turning inward. If anyone offers to do for you what you can do for yourself, reject their offer and turn to Christ, the creative power of God within you. Your life is your light of the world. By changing your way of thinking, Christ will change your world. The earth mentioned in the scriptures is the mind of man. It is on this psychological earth that the idea of the kingdom of heaven has been implanted. During the state of sleep, false doctrines called tares have been introduced. They grow with the wheat and will be harvested. Therefore, be selective and eliminate the tares by killing any belief in a power outside the mind. The wealthy man is satisfied with his social and financial position. He has no thirst for growth. If you are satisfied, your life will not change, 
for you will neither hunger nor thirst for a higher level of consciousness. Only you know if hunger has reached you or not, but you have not begun the work you have given yourself until you have begun to critically observe your thoughts. Select the future you want to work on tonight. Be attentive tomorrow. Ask yourself, Am I maintaining the attention I want? Is this how my friend wants me to see him? Am I limiting myself? Then act in your imagination, for imagination precedes action. Allowing falsehood to take possession of your mind will cause havoc. Watch your thoughts, claim your throne, and consciously allow your human imagination to govern your world. Once activated, your human imagination will grow in wisdom and power, while the external will become passive and powerless. But you must be attentive and vigilant towards your thoughts to bring the external to passivity. Only then will you know what it is to be in the world but not of it. The purpose of this teaching is to awaken the Christ sleeping in man, dreaming of different states of being, and bring him into the conscious circle of humanity, where man is self-aware. Once you are aware of your true being, you will cease to condemn the sleeping man. Your desires are not subjective and intangible things, but solidly real. Begin to awaken the Christ within you by clothing your subjective desires with reality. I promise you that the day you do this, they will become facts in your world. Aim to no longer lie to yourself. Work on this characteristic within you. Be extremely observant and honest with yourself. Observe how the energy that was directed towards negative states flows towards your higher goal. Perhaps your goal is to become a great teacher, not to impose your will on others, but to awaken others to what you have awakened in yourself. Awakening begins when you feel a separation between the natural self and the imaginative spiritual self. It is this spiritual self that gives reality to your objective state by changing the feeling of self. You can direct your life internally and escape the prison of your current state by thinking from the viewpoint that the problem is solved. Move from problem to solution. This change in attitude is called the Beatitudes. In other words, be what you want to be by assuming you already are. When you know what you want, clothe yourself in a new concept of yourself by withdrawing yourself from the evidence of the senses and placing it where you want to be. Through this assumption or attitude of being, you have moved from one state to another, and if I am lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Once you have risen to new states, stay there. Do not return to the testimony of your senses, but remain in your desire until a different world is established. Any change in the feeling of self automatically produces changes in the external world. Therefore, you must learn to die daily to your old beliefs. The affirmation, those who lose their life for my sake will find it, means to give up everything of which you are currently aware. If you lose it, you will discover that yourself is again clothed in a higher level of being, thus causing a new expression in your world. When taking a new direction, the journey is made in the mind. A physical journey can be followed, but the journey must first take place internally, where you are psychologically. At that moment, an enlightened being lives at the top of the mountain, and the human imagination, when fully controlled, personifies itself as a being called Christ. As long as you are violent, you are asleep. Wake up your spiritual self by observing your actions and reactions to life, and you will lose the impulse to retaliate. What happens to you here is not important, but how you react to what happens defines you. Your reactions tell you where you are, why you are so, why you attract life in its every detail. The Bible does not teach reincarnation. Its central teaching is the rebirth of consciousness at increasingly higher levels. One must be born of water and of the Spirit, not just of water. Unless a man is born of the Spirit, he cannot enter the higher level of being called the Kingdom of Heaven. In this series of lectures, you have received psychological instructions on how to work on yourself, your mind has been washed of some errors, baptized and born of water. However, unless this truth is applied, you will not know the Spirit. The word Maria means water. The Christ in you is born of water and of the Holy Spirit. The outer self cannot receive instructions. It is literal and takes everything at face value, thereby only getting stone. 
The just man, however, is aware of being the man he wants to be, while the foolish man robs himself by not claiming his desire. Every time he sees a man being less than he wants to be, he has stolen from him the state necessary to externalize it. Do not be like the heathen who, with vain repetitions, hopes to attract God's attention. Instead, when you pray, enter into yourself, shut the door, and your father who listens secretly to your subconscious will reward you openly. You only need to change the feeling of self, shut the door to the external world and feel the state your friend desires with a planned program. See him and speak to him from the principle that he is already that person who congratulates you or is happy for you. Keep the door of reason and logic closed and walk with real faith in what you have heard and seen secretly will be rewarded openly. The Bible was written by the conscious circle of humanity. This circle enters the moment of awakening. It was not composed by men. The Bible is a divine instruction with unlimited interpretations. It is a test in the development of your understanding, and as you grow, your understanding deepens more and more. Although man is enveloped in conditions or states, the being that truly is always in the I am, whatever man consents to, he will manifest in his world. You can accept as fact what your reason and senses deny, or you must always submit to the dictates of reason. The same consciousness that produces health produces illness, wealth, or poverty. Whatever you consent to as conscious, whatever you affirm as true, will manifest. When you know the spiritual being within you, you will affirm the supremacy of imagination and subject all things to it. Every knee must bow to imagination. Look, we are transformed into the very image. You can contemplate a given situation and make it so natural that you transform into its image. When you feel all imagination, the naturalness of the image you contemplate, divinity is not divided, everything is but a projection of unity. You are told to love your neighbor as yourself, for there is no other. Sanctify yourself, not another. Working on others will not change them, only by changing yourself will others change. Seek confirmation of your ideas and you will not cease to grow. All books are made by man and without divine inspiration. Cling to them, and you will remain at the same level where you are, but believe in yourself and you will see your reality change. Trust in your human imagination, and you will grow in wisdom and stature. As you grow, you will surpass your old beliefs. My ideas about the historicity of the Bible are not original. The Biblical Encyclopedia was published in 1888, sponsored by the University of Oxford, it took 12 years for 127 brilliant minds of all beliefs to complete it. These men and women who knew ancient languages, after intense research, came to the conclusion that the Bible from beginning to end was a mythological allegory. Another wonderful book is Smith's Bible Dictionary, published in 1860, which consists of four volumes. They discovered that the writers of the Bible used a symbolic framework to which they attached their psychological truths and when their eyes were opened, they knew it. To know is to be united, and to become what is contemplated, so he disappeared from their sight when they knew him. In chapter 3 of 1 John it says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God, and we are. The world does not know us, because it did not know him. As children of God what we will be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when it is revealed, we will be like him, because we will see him as he is. Anyone who places their hope in him purifies themselves as he is pure. We are the children of God destined to become God himself, and God creates everything he individualizes as you are aware. Therefore, resolve only to listen to what is good for you and for others. If you adopt this attitude, everything that enters your mind will contribute to a noble life and you will discover the joy of delighting in higher states. When a man dies, it is an expansion into a dimensionally larger life. If you have not yet awakened here, you must begin to awaken in the fourth level by ascending a block of multidimensional dimensional time. You ascend because of your ability to function in a dimensionally larger world, and each dimensional world is contained within a dimensionally larger world. In turn, this world is contained within an even dimensionally larger world, without end. But by remembering the love that the Father has given you, try it, 
knowing that anyone who places their hope in him purifies themselves as he is pure, 